Ladies and gentlemen, today is November 19th, 2013, and this is the Cane Peel Show, episode 126, where we learn to be better artists, specifically on Tuesday, because it is Tutorial Tuesday. I'm your host, Ken Lafferty, and today we are going to be doing a lesson on lighting, composition, and color. But before we get into that, we need to take a stroll down the lovely lane, and I'm super excited because I have not looked at any of these pictures yet. So you're going to get my actual reactions, my real reactions. Uh, like these, uh, I love these comics coming in from Brian Hogan. I suppose that's supposed to be me, <laughs> Fear My Vanheimer. I like that a lot. Oh, I like, I like the style. I like the style. Oh, I like this too. Nice. Very cool. Jack Skellington. I like that. You know, that's interesting that you drew this here. Because uh, one year for Halloween, I wanted to be like the Cheshire Cat. And I painted, I just took a photo of myself and I painted what the face paint was going to look like. And it worked really well. Uh, I love this. Coming in from Simon the freaking chicken costume. I love this. This is just so awesome. Really, really cool stuff, guys. Ooh, nice. Buns of steel. Love the muscly women. Mmm, 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 mmm. Very cool. Awesome demon creature coming in from Anne. And as well as Murlocs. Murlocs. Wow, I haven't seen them in a long time. So thank you to everyone who has submitted your awesome pictures to Facebook. Those of you who have not yet come out of your shells, please come out of the ocean, much like this murloc here, and submit your stuff to the Facebook. We have candy and cookies, and we have a good time. All right, guys, with all that out of the way, I do want to show you uh, what we are going to be going into today. And I'm going to show you that via the banner that I posted on the Facebook. So this is what we're going to be talking about today, lighting, composition, and color. And this is a commission piece that I did a couple weeks ago with Zach and Riven. I don't know exactly what people like about this pair. And usually I'm against like putting two, like drawing these, oh, these characters are together pictures. I think they're really kind of dumb sometimes. But I like the fact that this was just so like out there. And I like Zach and Riven. So I just decided that I was going to go ahead and do it. So, um, but while I was doing this, I realized a couple things that I wanted to teach you guys. And that was A, how to create a composition for a piece. How to create a composition for a piece, uh, lighting, and as well as how do you choose the colors to go onto a character. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I have prepared the time lapse. So let's go ahead and jump into that. All right. So, and I thought of something really cool today, actually, as well. Uh, while the time lapse is going, I can pause it and I can actually like draw over top of it. Mmm, new technology, new ideas, new ideas. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started with this thing here. And I'm going to show you basically uh, what I want to talk about first off is how I just go about sketching in the beginning. And what I want you guys to pay attention to right off the, be right off the bat is this. So take a look at how I'm going about in sketching these things right here, like the face specifically. Like notice how simple it is. It's just like these lines and then it has eyes like that and then the mouth. Like that's literally how I draw expressions at the beginning. And what I'm focusing on here is just kind of like trying to figure, you can see these other little drawings up here, like just trying to figure out flow. Like see how Zach's head like flows like over here this way. It just doesn't make a lot of sense, but I almost like to almost suspend reality for the, just because it helps the flow of a picture, it helps the, the composition of the picture. So I'm looking at things like this, kind of going out like that. You know, see how Riven's ears kind of flow up like that, and then it kind of goes down her body like that. So yeah, I like stuff like that. Continuing. Oh, I like that. I like that. It's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet drawn over top of time lapses. Who would have thought we could do that? Who would have thought? But yes, the curve of her body, I really like that. I like doing stuff like that, especially for the sexy ladies. So, um, and a couple things that you guys are going to notice here is um, the changes that I go about doing as I begin to refine the piece. And one of the things that I'm doing here is I'm trying to, I'm going in and I'm refining Zach's face right here. And um, something that I ended up doing, <laughs> something that I ended up doing right there, you saw his jaw was like sticking out, I kind of brought it back in for a second. Uh, what I ended up doing was I drop in this right here because, again, look at the flow. It brings us from Zach and we follow it and then it goes right back to Ribbon. So that, those are other little things, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that not every character that you have has this big tentacle coming off the back of his head, and you can point it at whatever other character you want it to point at. But you want to consider consider the tools that are at your uh, disposal. 
consider the, the tools at your disposal and use those uh, in the proper way. Okay, so you notice I actually redraw Ribbon's butt here. And the reason why I decided to turn her entire body was because I, like, prior to this, her body was very flat. See how it's all just like, it, it's almost like it could be like a cardboard cutout sitting next to him. And I wanted to add like a third dimension. We want to see some depth in that butt. So I went ahead and <laughs> redrew it so you could see her body turn. So I drew her butt first and then I go ahead and I turn her shoulders as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, I like that. And one thing that I'm sure you guys, everybody's wanting to know is how do you draw butts, right? How do you draw like simplified butts? And I will show you, let me get it to a good point where I can actually pull it up. And I'll show you guys a couple shapes that I like to remember when I'm drawing like backsides. Let's go ahead and take that one. I like that one. Add that one. Color, composition, and butts. Bonus butts. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So the biggest thing that I want you guys to remember is, you know, you can see the waist obviously right here and the back coming up. But basically, the butt is, you draw the leg coming up like this, okay? You want to think about the thigh. And see how it kind of like overlaps this little area right here and you can see the stomach kind of going up? Well, the butt is basically, it, you could almost draw it like a cartoon. You know, I'm, I'm sure you've seen this before where you draw like just two circles, right? That's basically how you draw it, right? And then all you got to do is just erase this little thing right there. Just a whoop. Actually, wait a second. There's a better way. There's a better way I can do this. I need to make a new layer over top of this. Okay, so basically you draw like two circles like this, right? And I always laugh every time I do it like this because it just looks so funny. But it is actually how you draw butts. And then all I do is basically just erase this line, this entire line right here. And then have that transition just kind of be a soft transition. And then the rest of this circle, just leave that edge right there. Okay? Then you're going to wind up with something like that. And again, you want to think about, notice how her suit kind of wraps around it. That's because of the depth of the butt. The depth of the booty. And then you go ahead and just erase a little bit of that. So that's kind of how I go about doing that, that kind of thing. Okay? Let's continue. And you can see me as I refine it going forward. But that's, it's a really, really easy way for me to remember drawing butts. <laughs> Hashtag butt depth. Yes, you guys have all the good stuff in the chat. Love that. <laughs> all right, guys, so now watch how I go about refining this face. Very, very simple. I'm going in, and I actually drew over top of the little, I almost think it was like the 19, 1920s cartoons, or it's like old Steamboat Willie, where it's just like the little, the little eye and the eyebrow. But then how do I add on top of that to create the, the actual face? So let's go ahead and check that out. I can actually jump to the proper point. Okay, uh, yeah, we're coming up on it. Okay, so check it out. Look what I did. I literally drew in that line right there, that line right there, and then that line right there. And now all of a sudden it has, you've drawn the outside of the eye. And this works really well for anime, obviously. This is, I'm drawing this in the comic book style that I use. So oftentimes I'll actually do this off of the sketches that I've drawn for the comic as well. You just add in the nose. You just kind of erase things, figure out what mouth you want to be there. This one was kind of cute, but it was it made her look like she was kind of doing like a duck lip thing where her teeth were kind of stuck out far. And I really like to do this thing where I kind of stretch the smile across the face a little bit always. Almost to the point where it's a little bit um, unrealistic, I guess, but we're drawing cartoons, so it doesn't really matter. I just like the way it feels, right? I like the way it feels. It feels really cool. There's, there's a lot of uh, awesome artists out there that... Um, or just, just a few awesome artists that I've seen. They kind of do like an anime-inspired style, but then they have like these really big mouths, like these big, it almost reminds me of like Joker from Batman, um, uh, Dark Knight, how it just has like that, almost like a Chelsea grin thing going on, and it looks really cool. So that's a little bit of the inspiration from that. And of course, it's not to that extent, but little things, little things inspire quite a bit. Okay, so once again, uh, you can see me refining the butt here as I like to call it, focal point of the piece here. And um, yeah, let me just, uh, let me make sure I actually get done with it and then I'll show you guys just the refinement process of that. And a couple things that I want you to keep in mind as you go about creating values and kind of start shading things. It'll really help you out a lot. 
in general, it just helps with anything. I think this is actually this is a good this is a good spot. Got a good view right there. Okay, so take a look at this. Take a look at this. I'm going to draw in that same exact thing. Okay, so see how the leg comes up and then just meets the hip, right? You almost want to think about like the pelvis is right there. That's what's happening. And then right through here, you have the other side of the thigh. And see how it kind of goes out and then comes back in a little bit and then goes back out. What you want to try not to do is do it. I mean, you can if you want to simplify it, but you want to try to avoid doing one of these where it's just like one shape, like one curve. If you show just like the subtle hint of the muscle in there, it makes it look so much more interesting and sexy. Okay? And again, I've actually done it a little bit here. See, like what I said not to do here, I've literally done it right here. But I guess it's a little bit different from this angle, from this side. Technically, you could do a little bit more of the muscle definition. But then also what I want to talk to you guys about, and this isn't just with the butt. This actually has to do with the actual suit and everything. A really easy way to shade things in is, oh, whoops. A really easy way to shade things in is to uh, take, your, take your chalk brush. And what I do is I just press lightly, and I kind of go through it like this, right? And that's how I start to create kind of values, right? I start to create values and I start to kind of like shade things. And I almost think about, like for lighting, I really think it's nice to have like a direct light, like going straight onto it. And that's basically what you're seeing here. You're seeing the reflectiveness of the, the suit, right? Uh, coming at you by the reflection of the light that's pointing straight at them. Okay, so that... That, that allows you to basically follow this line, like you can follow a line right down the body of the highlight that occurs. And same thing here. The reason why you're seeing this highlight is because this surface is pointed straight at us, right? Same thing with here. Notice how it gets brighter right here? That's because this surface, again, is pointing straight at us. Uh, same thing over here with Zach's suit. See how that part is reflective? That part, as it turns, is looking straight at us. So these are things that I like to think about when I am creating values and doing shades and stuff like that. Okay, so let me make sure this thing is lined up again. And then we will continue. And I like to show you the values on the butt because I know you're going to pay attention. I, I could show you, oh, let's look at Zach's shoulder. And you'd be like, <sighs> you'd be snoring, you'd be tired. You wouldn't, you wouldn't pay attention. You wouldn't care. <laughs> But yeah, you want to think about the, the roundness, the roundness of the, the form. And you can even see in here how there's a little bit of reflected light going on on the other side of the, you know, the legs and everything else. But we'll get a little bit more into that. that. That's our secondary light source. That's a reflected light and secondary light source. And that's another thing that I'm going to get into once we start moving into the color. Which is going to be very soon. <sighs> very soon. Okay. Um, let's see, let me make sure I'm not missing anything over here. Okay, uh, that's what I'm talking about right there. See that little line that I added in? That's basically that circle that was drawn in. I left that little line in there, and that shows just like the, I don't know what you want to call it, the dimple or the, the skin fold, whatever's happened in there. It looks really nice. So, make sure you add it. Make sure you add it. Make your butts look good. Add that, add that line right there. Um... And uh, what else? What else can I say about this? Oh, uh, I wanted to go into a little bit of the back, I guess. I could go a little bit into the back. I mean, this is probably not the best thing to talk about for backs, but just just for a quick, yeah, why not? Let's let's talk about the back. Let's see if I can actually zoom in a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Let's talk about the back. Okay, so something that really helps me with the back is to understand. Again, this is a simplified style, but you want to think about the shoulder blades kind of coming down like this, right? And the other shoulder blades are going to be occurring here. And then there's this line that goes down the back. See that? You can even see it in the suit. See right there how the light kind of picks up on the other end? That's because there's like this, this, uh, you know, if I were to round it, if I were to draw a line through it, it goes in like that and then it comes back out again. That's the way that the back muscles kind of work. The, the muscles come in and meet the spine. So that's what I'm drawing there. You always want to think about that line that kind of goes down the back right there. And again, it's very, very simplified. I've actually done another tutorial on back. So if you guys want to know more in-depth things about muscles and all that stuff, as well as butts, please search how to draw backs and butts on the YouTube. 
you can check that out. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. I haven't checked. I think I did that like last year. I think it's it's been a little while since I did that one. So uh, might be some things we can improve upon. But in general, uh, if you want some more in depth things, check that out. Okay. So now we're moving on to the color and the masking. So the first thing that I'm going to do here that you'll notice that I'm doing is I'm separating Zach onto his own mask and then Riven as well onto her, her own mask. And this is something that I usually don't think about doing uh, because it's rare that I actually have characters overlapping one another like this. You're usually side by side or they can all just kind of be on one mask. But because Riven is overlapping Zach here, I had to place her with her own character mask, which is basically what all the other masks are built off of. For those of you who are curious about masking, again, I've done another tutorial on this. You guys should know by now the, the technique that I use. Basically, I create the lines, and then I drop the colors behind it, much like an animation cell, and then I basically figure out all the colors behind the lines, and then I go in front of the lines and do overpainting. Okay? And that's what you're going to see me do here. And you can see, even over here, how I'm working. Uh, right here is the character mask, and then I'm just building the mask up and then clipping them back to that original mask. This makes it easy so I don't have to worry about going out of the lines, and it just makes the picture look nice and clean. So what I want to talk to you guys about right now is how I'm going about picking colors. Like you'll notice right when I dropped on Ribbon's uh, color on her leggings, like notice how I'm playing around in the hue shift tool up here. What I'm doing this for is because I'm trying to figure out a good mix of colors. And notice how we're all they're all kind of like uh, sticking around, kind of like this reddish, purplish, and, um, and, and even Zach, who's green, I've kind of pushed him towards this blue. In fact, let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and screen cap this once we're done with the whole thing. See, look, I'm playing around with the hue shift over here, seeing, oh, does blue look good on the dress and the oranges? And this is kind of where a little bit of color theory and color choice comes into play. Oh, oh, and the reason why I'm sticking with like uh, purples and blues and red and stuff is because I'm kind of I, I took the background color palette from the Battle Bunny ribbon picture that I did for Riot and I actually just dropped that in here and I kind of created a little makeshift background and then I'm wanting to pick colors that go well with this right here and then I went ahead and dropped a little gradient on there see how it goes from yellow kind of fades up to this kind of dark brown but yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and finish up with dropping in the colors and then I'm gonna bring it into Photoshop and I'm gonna show you kind of why I chose those colors. Okay, I think that I think that was it. Alright, so let's go ahead and take this. Um, and I think I end up changing uh, Zach's I end up changing Zach's tuxedo color a little bit later on. But regardless, let's talk about this stuff here. So let's go ahead and pull up our color picker so you can see what we're talking about. Okay, so we've got like this purplish background, right? And when you're picking colors to uh, begin coloring, a big thing that I like to do is I like to think about shadow colors, almost like ambient colors. If there was no light on these characters, they were just sitting in this purple room, right? What colors would they appear? Now, Zach is normally green, right? You'd be like, oh, Zach is green, so let's pick this. Right? But, again, this might be the color that when a light shines on him, you would see. You would see this color. But because he's in this ambient kind of purple, bluish room, we're going to want to drop that down. See how I go from green and I push it up more towards blue and I desaturate it a little bit. What this is going to do is it's still going to read as green, but it's going to read as green in this new lighting scheme. And then you can add in all the green that you want, which we're going to do later. Same thing with his uh, blue tux, right? He's got, he could be black, right? It could be black. So he'd be like, oh, let's go straight black. But no, 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 no. Because of the lighting scheme, we want to stick more towards like the purplish and the reds and maybe do something around this area, right? Let me move that over so you can actually see. Maybe do something a little bit more around this area. It really surprised me, and I didn't really catch on to this until after I started working professionally, how much of the color that you see is actually desaturated. I used to work with, it's like, oh hey, let's just use all the colors. Let's use, let's make everything just vibrant, beautiful, and pretty, and super saturated. And I didn't realize that a lot of what makes art beautiful is uh, like using those saturated colors in 
it's almost like that extra flavor. It's just that extra flavor that, that goes on the very top. It's the cherry on top of the sundae that is your masterpiece. Okay? So, um, that's what I want you guys to focus on. Like, focus on choosing your colors uh, and not being afraid to go a little bit desaturated. And then use those saturated colors at the end. Use the saturated colors just to punch the, the main focal points out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to this. And with some more color picking. See, again, white shirt, it's not white. I've taken it down, I've made it gray, and I've added blue to it. Even though I'm going to change this later. But, regardless. Okay, so look at how I just changed that. I made it a little bit more green. I think I actually made it a little bit more uh, red later on. Okay, so let me let me go ahead and do this too. So let me show you how I guys uh, let me show you how I begin shading this now. Okay, Woo. this is actually really awesome. I like doing it this way. This is so much more fun to actually like take the take the thing and like actually draw over it. Okay, so um, I'm actually gonna put this over here. Yeah, I'll put that right there. So let's take a look at the color that is actually Zach's tuxedo. See, look at that. It's not black. It is has a slight little bit of red in it, but it's still very desaturated. It's hanging out right over here. Then as we go to the highlight, like what we did, we went from right here to right here. Barely any change at all. And yet it still looks very nice. The white shirt has blue in it for the shadow, right? Ambient color. Then once the light begins to hit it, we start moving more towards white, more towards white. All right, now let's continue a little bit of ways. Now that you know a little bit of how I begin lighting things, remember paint shadow first, then paint light. Okay, so now look, see, now I'm bringing in the green. The green naturally flowing to that bluish shadow. Remember what we first painted Zach's head as? Now it gives you that, that beautiful transition. It just looks so amazing. It makes it look like you know what you're doing. When really, it's actually not that hard. And what I'm doing, guys, is I'm painting on the, I'm actually painting still. See how it says Zach Green? That is the mask that I just laid out for his whole head. I'm not making it. You can make a separate mask for lighting and all that stuff, but really it's not that hard. Because worst comes to worst, you mess it all up and you just paint it back to what it was, the flat color that it was before. So that's how I go about doing that. So let's go ahead and continue. I really think that hue shifts are a big thing. He, like The most awesome hue shifts happen, and I think material can be told because of hue shift and just what happens with the color, like how it reacts with light. You can paint metal, you know, you can, I could make Zach's tuxedo look metal just because of the way that it interacts with the light, you know, or I can make his head look like it's made out of fuzzy fabric, like, you know, the types of itchy sweaters that you get on Christmas, Christmas is coming up, itchy sweater material, just by the way that it reacts with the light. I don't have to draw in all the little fibers and all that stuff. I could do that too, but, you know, really it's all about how it reacts with the light. So again, oh, um, did I already paint ribbon skin? I didn't. Okay, so we got to go back to that. The ribbon skin is another important part. Okay, so okay, so check this out. This is another thing that I want to talk to you guys about. Watch how I lay in this color on ribbon skin, and then once it zooms in, or once I finish it, then we'll then I'll show you guys my whole thought process with going into skin. Okay, so the first thing that I did is print that. Bring that over. All right. So the first thing that I did was, you notice, this is our mask color right here. Our mask color is right there. That's ribbon skin. See? It's not up here. It's not peach. It's right down here. It's desaturated and it's dark. And then what I do is towards, like, like, I add pigment. I add reddish pigment around the shoulders, the elbows, the fingers and especially in the face, right? So see, look at look right here. As we go further up towards the shoulders, look how it slightly just turns more red. Like I want you to pay attention to right here and then right there. See, it barely moved at all. Barely moved at all, but it's something that is picked up almost subconsciously, and you could even increase the, the, the difference or the contrast that happens in that. But then, what's really important is once we start moving towards the highlights right here, now again, we go further towards yellow, right? The way, the general rule of thumb is for skin, I like to think of it as, as it goes towards the light, it gains a little bit of yellowish uh, color to it, and it desaturates. 
Okay? So see how we don't go from here to here. We go from here and then we go diagonal because it's getting lighter and desaturating. So see, you can see for yourself. There's that one, and there's that one, that one, that one. Okay? So that's how I go about doing skin. And it works for all kinds of, uh, it works basically, like I said, rule of thumb. Rule of thumb, darker, red, red on the shoulders, red on the face, like the cheeks and stuff. Makes people look alive. Makes the skin look alive. So, yes. So I go about just like shading in things. I do hue saturation or hue shifts even in the leggings. See, it's not just with skin. It can happen in any material that you really want. If it looks good, just go ahead and do it. I did it here. Notice how the leggings don't just go to a light pink. They actually go a little bit more towards like uh, orange, like a desaturated orange. Very interesting. I want you guys to try this stuff out for yourselves. Try out hue shifting. Try out hue shifting. Uh, yes, but color theory, yeah, this is this is stuff that I usually try to shy away from. But lately I feel like I'm finally starting to get it, right? I'm starting to just get the tip of the iceberg of like, oh, hey, this is what makes these colors look good together. And again, I'm not a master at it by any means, but I'm like I said, I'm just barely starting to get it. Okay, guys, so the next thing I want to talk to you about is this lighting. This is called rim lighting, secondary lighting, if you will. I'm going to bring this in, and we're going to talk about that. And how simple it is. It's so simple. It is literally the easiest thing that you can do for a drawing. Once you're done with, with, once you're done with doing all these types of things, like drawing and shading and all that stuff, basically all I'm doing is saying, okay, well, look, here's our background back here. There's this huge white light coming from our right side. Okay, So basically I'm taking that bluish light, and now this is the point where I'm creating a layer over top of everything. Like, see, right over here, or, wait, no, on the video. Okay, so see, on this video, uh, it's called rim light, but this is over top of everything. And all I'm doing is I'm going in here, and I'm just painting the edges. Like, you don't have to worry so much about transitions here, because the, the transition is so quick, you can literally just go in and, like, paint the edges of your character, wherever you want it to go. You know, you can paint in rim light. And usually I try to stick to just the edges of the character, right? And what this helps with is this helps to define silhouettes. It helps to define shapes. It helps to pop your character off of the background. And it's super, super simple. So I really suggest that you guys do this for your lighting. Uh, again, you want to think about the lighting that's coming from the front, hitting our character. That's light one. Second light is coming from over here. And that's hitting all the sides of the characters. Second light is coming from the right. Okie dokie, okie dokie, out of the joke piece. And it's still, it's like even hitting Riven's legs over here, even though they're technically, you know, just this hole right here is not supposed to, you know, affect everything, whatever. You know what I'm saying. Uh, and that's the other thing that I want to talk to you guys about, is uh, a simple way to do backgrounds without having to draw a whole background is just create a shape create a shape around the characters. Like some people make little boxes and stuff. I'm sure you've seen all that stuff before. And I always ask myself, why do artists do that? Why do artists just like create a little block of color behind whatever it is they just drew? And the reason why they do it is because it adds depth to the picture. When you have these characters, like say Zack and Ribbon, were now just on a white piece or just a white background, the image would tend to look very flat. It would look like they're just like a sticker stuck on there. But as soon as you place another, uh, picture or an object, i.e. a square of color behind them, now all of a sudden it's Zack and Ribbon, that block of color is behind them, and then the white background. It makes it feel like there's more depth happening in the picture, even though it's simply an illusion. So uh, I kind of took that principle and dropped this circle behind them, and then you know I was able to create that depth. Create that depth. It almost looks like they could be standing in front of uh, like, like this is a, a board that has a hole cut in it, and then you can see behind them. So that's that's kind of another way that you can think of it as. And then I didn't have to draw the whole background. I really like that. So not only does it make the piece look better in terms of composition, but it's also easier. And we like that. We like easy things. We like easy things. All right. So uh, looks like we're finishing this puppy up. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, before we wrap up today... I want to take you guys on a little bit of a tour through all of the all of the layers. All of the layers. I'm going to go ahead and break down the PSD for you guys, and we're going to take a look at all the layers and how they all come together to make the final piece.
Okie dokie, okie dokie. In the meantime, I'm gonna open up Queen. Que Q and A trebuchets. I don't know why I could never say that. Q and A trebuchets. Please load your questions into this car. Launch them over the castle walls. <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and have fun with that. All right. Now let's break down this. Uh, let's break down this. Uh, Freaking, oh, I saved it like this? I did not mean to save it like this. Ah. Gosh, such an idiot. Okay, whatever. Let's just save it like that. All right, so let's go ahead and break down this PSD while you guys ask questions. No worry, any questions that I do not get today, I will write down and we will answer at a later date. Okay, so let us, let us begin. So the top layer is just... Um, bunch of garbage. You know, all this stuff we don't even need. Okay, so that's old stuff. Okay, so the first thing, the first layer that we have here is our ads. Right? I call it ads. It's just like the Zach Ribbon thing in my signature. So let's take that off. The second thing we have, this is overpaint layers. Overpaint layers are like the final touches that I do on the painting. So you can see the differences between those. Just a little bit of lighting, a little bit of clarifying of shapes, cleaning things up. Over paints going on here as well. This is a little bit of like the, you know, like that that fold, you know, like she's grabbing his collar there and just a little fold of fabric, the little light that's picking up right there. I like that. See, it's subtle things. Subtle things make the difference at the end. Even on a simplified piece like this, like this is by no means refined, but it doesn't have to be refined to show detail. You know what I mean? Showing detail can be a bunch of different things. This is the rim light layer. Look, see that? Look at how much depth and awesomeness that adds to the piece. What, and all you're doing is just painting one color. You're not worrying about transitions. You're not worrying about anything. All you're doing is just rim lighting. Super, super easy. Uh, the line coloring. That's another thing that I did not get into. And that is basically your lines sit over top of your layers right here. These are the lines. Take it away. That's what you see. But then there's line coloring, which softens the picture, softens the picture. This is what it looks like with all black lines. And basically what I've done is I've created a layer over top and made it a clipping mask. The way you make it a clipping mask, again, is you hold Alt and click between the two layers. And that says, okay, whatever colors you place on top of these lines, I will only color the lines. That's why, you know, it looks like a big blotch of color on here, and yet it doesn't show up here. Watch how it happens if I take it away. See? That's what it looks like if it's not a clipping mask. It's just a bunch of blotchy colors everywhere. But then you clip it back and it only affects the lines. Very awesome, so keep that in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and take it back. Take it back for the real thing. Take away the irises. Here's the eyes. Skin. See, all these things are all on just one layer. One layer for the coloring, one layer for the shading. I like to do it that way because it's, it's easy, it's simple. Not hard to remember, you know, what's going on. And it keep things, keeps things generally organized for me. I'm not very good at, like, organizing, I guess you could say. So I just, like, anything I can do to just make things easier. So those are all of Ribbon's things. And you can see how our lines are actually colored. There uh, you go, right there. Uh, take away Zach's eyes. Take away his greenness, the white collar, and the tux. And there you are. You're left with that. Then we move into the background. Take away that, take away that, that, and that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do it. That's how you create composition. That's how you do all that good stuff. And I hope that helped you. I hope that really helped you. Man, that was very informative. That was very informative. That was a mouthful of an episode. All right, questions coming up here. Um, what is the color of the rim light, someone is asking? The color, uh, that's literally his name, someone, 0956. Uh, the color that I used was just like that light blue. I just used the light blue. Um, yeah, but the, the color of the rim light should be whatever is actually affecting them. Like, it's not always going to be light blue, obviously. If they're next to a fire, if there's a fire right next to them, then it's going to be like a yellowish orange light happening. All right. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see, is there a common error with the lasso tool? Hmm. Oh, 
uh, Shazpaz, you're trying, you might be trying to select and move something that's on a different layer. If you try to select something with the lasso tool and move it, you'll get an error like this. Like say, or that's unselected. Like let's let's take this overpaint layer. If I select something on the overpaint layer and try to move it, see it says cannot use cannot move it because the target layer is hidden. So you might be getting something like that. Or sometimes what happens is when I try to deselect with my with my stylus, I'll, like I try to just click off of it to make it go away. But really, what I've done is I've just selected like a tiny little selection here, right? Like that tiny little selection. Then I'll go to paint something. I'll go to paint something, and nothing will happen. Nothing, nothing shows up. So I'm like, okay, what, what the heck's going on? But I don't have that there. So a good fix for that is just hit Control D from now on. Control D is deselect. Automatically gets rid of your lasso. Your lasso. All right. Jeez. Okay. A couple more questions, and then we're done. Uh, have you thought about making a possible animated version of Emma? in any way or form in the near future? Maverick2736 is asking a great question. And yes, I do plan on making Emma an animated series. That would be really cool to actually make it a cartoon. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it by myself, but who knows? Like, as the company grows, as the comic gains popularity, one day I might be able to pitch it to Cartoon Network, or I might be able to build a studio of my own. We'll make, we'll make Emma ourselves, you know? I really want to see this through. And I, I really see that as a dream, right? You start with the comic, make the cartoon, all that good stuff. So who knows? The sky's the limit, and I'm going to take it as far as I freaking want. So we're going to have some fun with that. Last question. Last question coming in from Tech1997. Uh, he's saying, I have problems with drawing long lines. A lot of troubles with drawing the Murloc pick I posted on Facebook because of his spikes. How do you draw long lines? Ah, good question. Good question, Maverick. All right, you could say, oh, yeah, like, great example right here with Zach's uh, tentacle thingy. Let me show you how I'd go about drawing a line like that. Basically, what I do is I talk a lot about line sculpting, and that's basically what I want you guys to get into. Like, I'll draw a line kind of like this, like I'll use like your arm and like kind of flick the wrist or whatever. You can do stuff like this, you know, those types of things to draw long lines. But really what it comes down to, what I'm doing, is I'm just creating, I'm creating the general shape that I want to see. So let's say if I were to draw Zach's head again. I kind of do one of these things. I kind of draw the line over and over and over again. And I kind of weight it like that. And then I'll kind of go back in and I'll sculpt it away, okay? Then if it's like a really long line, something like that, again, I'll kind of like draw it really quickly. And then I'll go back in and wait it. I'll go in and wait it like that. And then I'll take care of all these little flyaways or whatever you want to call it, splinters, if you will. That's how I go about creating long, flowy lines. Works good for tentacles as well as butts. Lovely lady butts. All righty, people. With that, we're going to go ahead and end today's show. Thank you once again, for everyone, for joining me live on Twitch as usual. You can inconspicuously load up Epic Outro Music. I've had a lot of fun. I need to cut this mop off my head. You guys have been a great audience as always. I hope you guys have a great Tuesday. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you tomorrow for whatever Wednesday. We're going to be working on the comics some more. Until then, you guys take care. See ya.